Well, as we reported earlier, time is running out for those negotiations in Copenhagen, but can science save the planet? Channel 4 News has contacted hundreds of the UK scientists to ask them what they think holds the most promise for tackling climate change. We've had a vast range of ideas thrown at us, from solar power to the futuristic idea of geoengineering. Our science correspondent Tom Clark has looked at some of the most promising schemes. In a flash, it ended a world war and heralded a new age. Splitting the atom produced the most power the planet had ever seen. The Manhattan Project, a supreme scientific and logistical feat, took the most sinister implications of atomic theory from the blackboard to the bomb in just three years. Do we need an effort that rivals the urgency of the Manhattan Project to address climate change? Channel 4 News asked the country's scientists what idea or technology they thought held the greatest promise for tackling the problem. Well over 100 of our finest brains replied. They didn't all agree on the answer and few thought one single idea would suffice. But they did agree that finding and pushing through world-changing solutions would require extraordinary will and effort. And if you want an heir to the Manhattan Project, then this might be where to begin. Splitting the atom gave birth to the nuclear age, but the opposite approach, crunching atoms together, or nuclear fusion, promises to deliver quantities of power that could easily replace all known existing sources with hardly any nuclear waste. Personally, I think fusion is the answer. I think fusion in the long run will be what we do. What we have to do now is to make it as soon as possible. This is the largest fusion reactor in the world. About a decade ago, it demonstrated it was feasible to generate vast amounts of energy by fusing matter together. It's why many of the scientists who contacted us said that ultimately nuclear fusion was the solution to our climate change problem. At the heart of the reactor, a donut-shaped chamber contains a swirling plasma of 15 million degrees where atoms fuse together. For a split second, it's generated enough power to run thousands of homes. So if we know how to do it, what's holding fusion power back? I think political will, right? Political will translates into cash, it translates into energy, it translates into all the things that we need to drive it forward now. We, we really know how are we going to do it now? But we need to make those technical steps and we need to put the money on the table and do it. Right? It's, it's put up or shut up time right now. Britain has signed up to a nuclear future, low carbon power from conventional reactors, but cheaper, waste-free fusion energy remains in the wings. Even its most ardent supporters know we'll need an interim solution. On the plains south of Seville, where orange groves once stood, now they're harvesting light. Every day, the sun's rays carry enough power to meet the world's energy needs 7,000 times over. It's just a question of catching them. Each of these mirrors is about the size of a tennis court, and there are 1,255 of them across this site. And on a properly sunny day, each of them focuses the sun's rays on that tower, making this the largest solar tower reactor in the world. But it's only when you get up there that you get a true sense of how vast this place really is. Many of our contributors made the case for solar. Whilst wind might work for the UK, the sun shines reliably on much of the world. In future, superconductor technology could carry solar energy from deserts to cloudy places like Britain. We use concentrated solar radiation from the sun in order to produce heat and to produce finally a steam to drive a steam turbine to produce electricity like in a conventional power plant. This plant is the largest solar tower in the, in the world operating on a commercial basis. Uh, it can feed about uh, 12,000 uh, homes in, in Spain. 12,000 homes, not many considering the awesome size of this scheme. And the plant requires a heavy subsidy to stay in business. Solar power has a way to go before it can compete against another rival fuel source. Containing millions of years of the sun's energy locked up within it, it's stable, available and cheap. The name of this wonder fuel? Coal. However, it's the root of the climate change problem and the world burns six billion tonnes of it each year. Whatever is agreed in Copenhagen, that's expected to nearly double. 
Perhaps that's why one solution supported by the most scientists who responded was the need for serious investment in capturing carbon released from burning fossil fuels and storing it underground, as yet an experimental technology. But the idea bubbling away in this laboratory at Imperial College in London might become the fuel of the future. To us, it's pond scum. To scientists here, these algae can produce hydrogen or fuel the cars, planes and homes of tomorrow. What we do is we treat them very badly. So some algae species, when they are deprived of sulfur, they start to produce hydrogen. And that's what we're using to, to make our hydrogen here. The dream of planet-friendly biofuels went sour when it emerged virgin forests were being cut down or much-needed food crops displaced by biofuel plantations. Engineers here are creating biofuel without the green gloss. These algae could produce usable amounts of hydrogen in just a couple of days and they're treated just like any other component in an industrial process. Produced in a facility more like an oil refinery, hydrogen from algae could power fuel cells or be burnt to run turbines with just water as a byproduct. The algae itself can also be harvested as a zero carbon biomass to burn in conventional power plants. But will any of this be enough? Last week, British scientists announced we had just 10 years left to halt the inexorable rise in greenhouse gases or almost certainly face dangerous levels of global warming. Our emails showed that some of Britain's scientists are beginning to think about what was, until recently, unthinkable. Geoengineering, schemes that manipulate the world's weather, oceans and atmosphere to keep us cool. In 1991, a massive volcanic eruption lowered the Earth's temperature by half a degree. For two years, sulphurous gases it spewed out blocked some of the sun's rays from hitting the Earth. So... Some scientists propose taking a pointer from nature and spraying billions of tonnes of sulphur gases high into the atmosphere or putting sulphur in jet fuel and letting commercial air traffic do that job for us. Or what about cloud brightening, a scheme to lace the skies with salt crystals pumped from a flotilla of boats on the world's oceans. The crystals would encourage clouds to form and reflect the sun's rays back into space. A trial of one geoengineering scheme showed tinkering with the planet can have unintended consequences. Pouring iron into the Southern Ocean was supposed to stimulate the growth of plankton that would absorb carbon dioxide, but it ended up fertilising other organisms, which put carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. There will certainly be risks associated with most of these techniques, and in particular their unintended consequences. And, and we don't yet know what those are for all the methods that have been proposed. And we really need to do some serious research on that and to have people thinking about what might possibly go wrong so that we can research them, understand them, find out how big they are, and then hopefully we can balance the risks of doing some of these things against the risks of doing nothing. One idea Professor Shepard thinks could work is carbon dioxide scrubbers artificial trees that actively suck carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. But this would have to be done on a massive scale. You'd need millions of the machines to actually make a difference, and they take years to remove significant amounts of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. For sheer ambition, what about the plan to put a trillion mirrors into 100,000 square miles of space? They'd reflect the sun's rays away from the Earth, but the plan comes with a planet-sized price tag, and like all geoengineering schemes, it might not even work. One researcher emailed us to advocate an existing technology that could do much to address climate change. The humble condom. The impact on the climate of clothing, feeding and sheltering the Earth's projected 9 billion inhabitants will be profound. The violent history of the Manhattan Project teaches us human minds can achieve the near impossible when united by a single objective. But climate change requires solving many problems at the same time. Uniting people to address them all is a challenge we've never faced before. Tom Clark inside the brains of a number of British scientists. More for news is at eight.